So I'm Paul Schreiber from Synthesis Technology here at Knobcon. And I'm here to show uh, my new wavetable oscillators, the E352 Cloud Terrarium and the E370 Quad Oscillator. Both of those share a commonality with our free WaveEdit software. This is on my website at synthtech.com. And this allows you to both import waves or to draw them and use harmonics to generate your own wavetables that are then loaded by SD card into the hardware and used as an oscillator. So right here we have an example of a short wave. Notice there's no sample rate. This is a fixed length. So an entire wave bank is 64 wave tables and an entire bank is about 16K in length. So here I picked a wave table that happens to be about 12K in length, so it'll fit. Now if you were to load a longer one, you can zoom in, cut, stretch, and edit, just like you can in Logic or Pro Tools or Ableton. The same kind of tools are also available here. So here's an example of an imported wave, and let's gonna play back this wave. What you can do with these sliders is you can select the pitch. So this would be the pitch of the VCO, and this is the Z-Morph. So Z-Morph will play all the wave tables in order from 0 to 63 at this speed. This is equivalent to in hardware if you had a sawtooth wave, LFO, that was doing the scanning with the sawtooth wave. So this is a software sawtooth wave, and here's what it sounds like. So as you know, that's the Three Stooges curly saying, certainly. So the software will take that as it is, and then it will chop it into 64 individual waves, all in the 8x8 grid. So if you're familiar with the E370, I mean, sorry, the E350 Morphine Terrarium, this is exactly the way the Morphine Terrarium is. Now the Morphine Terrarium has been replaced by the E352. So once you have the individual waves in here, again, this is the what we call the X direction, the Y direction, and Z is end to end. Then you can edit and apply effects to each individual wave or the entire bank as a whole. We also have another interesting view called a waterfall display. So this is the exact same thing graphically represented differently. So this is a, the waves from 0 to 63 start to finish. And again, we can simply play them back like that. So it doesn't do anything, it's just a different view. So let's go to the individual waveform editor. So this is an example of a blank wave at the end that I use the tools. So we have stuff like a pencil tool, which means I can, I'm trying to do the sideways here. So I can draw on the screen. And if you look down here in real time, this is the spectra. And one of the advantages that we did is we wrote our own graphic libraries. And this, this is on a Windows 10 machine. And you can see just how fast that spectra updates in real time. And once we draw the spectra, we have a toolkit down here, and one of the most popular things to do is a wave folder, and we can apply wave folding in real time to that as well. And then once you have it back, we don't want to morph, want to just simply play this wave table. I'll shift the pitch up a little bit. And that's what it sounds like. Once it's playing, it's an editing in real time. So you can do that. So once you have the waves and the bank, you can export individual waves or you can export the whole bank. You export them to a micro SD card and then you load it into the hardware. There is a duplicate memory on the board so you do not have to have the SD card to run the software. It takes one second to load it and you're done. We also have one more unique feature I hope this works because it's based on the Wi-Fi in this room. And that's called our repository. Let's see if it works. I can't believe it. It's a demo that works. So we have a cloud. I hate that word, but that's what it is. 
where you can upload and download your own banks and share them with other people online. And so these are examples of other wave banks that other people have made and uploaded and everybody has access. Now, can you preview them there? Yes. That has that you simply select the one you want. Let's see if I can do this one. Okay, so this is from the original FISMO. So I come over here and I say load bank. So it's now loaded over it. Again, I'm doing this kind of blindly. So let's see. Is it playing? So I can change. That's one oscillator. So let's scan through the bank. You can see this is the speed. This is our sawtooth. Then I can change the pitch here. Like that. Okay, so this is the E352 Cloud Terrarium. This replaces the current E350 Morphine Terrarium and the E340 Cloud Generator. Those are no longer made. This combines every single feature of those, plus it adds two new features, which is two operator FM, which is on the E330, but you can use wavetables instead of signs. And it has a full eight different noise generators with a Moog low pass filter in there. Now this is a single oscillator, so there's one coarse and one fine. It has two outputs, so you can have two different wavetables, but it's always on one pitch. If you want different pitches, you have to go back to the wave edit and put a wavetable in where the pitches of the wavetable are different. So just remember, this is a single oscillator. So what we've done is we've taken the Three Stooges wave file and we've put it into one of our three user memories. And so now we can sit there and use our standard E340 and E350 algorithms like morphing and spreading and plus we have the combination of morph plus cloud, which, what, which is what we're going to hear, on that sample. And what's interesting is that that sounds nothing at all like that. Now certainly you can get that same sample back by taking an LFO, feeding it a sawtooth wave at the right frequency, in that case it's about 8 tenths of a hertz, through the Z morph and scan the whole wave table and you'll hear exactly what you heard on the wave edit. But I think it's more interesting to hear this. So this is that exact same sample, but it's now only playing a portion of it as a four oscillator cloud, which is four detuned copies with some spreading, that's called spread. Then we add some chaos, which is filtered white noise, which will jiggle the spread. So Let's see what that sounds like. And so this is one of the outputs. And here's the second one that I've got on the key. I think we'll agree that it sounds nothing like curly. So we have a, a dual morphine LFO with two outputs. They're both sine waves and they're phase shifted by about 180 degrees. And they're feeding the two parameters here, okay, which is X and Y. And this is the spread and the chaos, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this patch cord and move it from CVX. I'm gonna put it I mean, I'll see why, and put it on CVZ, which is the morph. So now we're going to have a fixed chaos with modulated Z, which is going to scan through that whole sample. And it's going to sound quite different. It's going to sound something like this. You can hear a little bit of it. 
So there it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a part of it. So that's just an example of what you can do with a very simple input and with that different algorithms make very strange and weird audio outputs but also use them as LFOs as well. So the 64 wavetables per bank and so one preset saves those 64 wavetables. So there's 8 times 64, there's 256, was that? 512 individual wavetables. So you can store 512 individual wavetables in the memory in the module without an SD card present. This is the standard silver, and this is a black edition that's only available through my website at Syntech.com. This is what you get when you go to a dealer, and this is what you get when you come to me directly. They're available now. Um, I'm shipped up to about number 70. Well, this is the E370 Quad VCO. This was our Kickstarter module that we did back in March of last year. And this is uh, about to go into beta testing. We're going to have beta units out to our beta testers starting um, at the end of September, early October. This is actually four independent oscillators. The, three, the E352, it was one oscillator. This is four independent oscillators. Now what we had to give up to make it fit, even in this large size of you know, 54 HP, instead of having three CV parameters that are fixed by algorithm in the E352, this has a pool of 16 CVs that are shared by all the voices. So it's like a VCS3 pin matrix. All right? So every single oscillator can look and steal, uh, steal is a bad word, share they can share the CVs in the pool. And so they're not fixed. So if you want to have, for example, a morph voice that morphs in X and Y, you don't have to have it set to the knobs that are here for that voice. You can assign them to the knobs on a different one, or you can actually use a fixed value and not use any knob at all. The other advantage is you can ha actually have one knob or one CV input simultaneously route to all 16 parameters of all the voices at once. So it's basically a multiple that's done in software. The other thing we have is an audio mixer. Now it does not have VCAs, it's a fixed mixer, but every individual output is actually a mixture of all four voices. All of this information is again saved as a preset and memory, and it has all the exact wavetables that the 350 and the 352 had. It has all the modes of the 352, but we added, with the Kickstarter, we added two different modes that are not in the E352. One is through zero FM modulation, and the other is according mode, which we can also use as a crude step sequencer. So we can actually, with a text file, load uh, 64 different chords which is simply done as a number of cents off the interval. And either you can either step through them with a the control voltage or use the sync inputs to clock through them. And so that way you can do microtuning. We don't have to worry about quantizer. It's out to a thousandth of a cent. So you can just type in any value you want and get any tune. So you can do just intonation, 32 is tones. That, is that uh, Robert's? You never would have guessed that that was Robert Rich. Never would have guessed that. So this module is available first through our Kickstarter program, and now it has moved to a dealer only. So the Kickstarter modules will be shipping probably right now, honestly, around the first week of November. I'm going to try to ship the last week of October, but I really don't know. I still have to buy 
some of the parts and do the assembly. Um, but they will start shipping this year. Um, they will go to dealers in February of next year.